So we've got everything up and running where it's actually showing our blog post, and we're dynamically grabbing all of those from the markdown files. However, last time I mentioned that if you change around some of the metadata in a file, like for instance, you change a draft to true or change the date, you might notice that it's just picking up the first post and the second post. And if for some reason they're out of order or something like that, or you want to exclude something from the future, for instance, like this date has not yet happened as I record this video, you'll actually need to filter that out manually. Now, there may be plans to change to this in Astro. Maybe it's already happened, but I haven't seen it. So I want to show you how you might do this with JavaScript. And one of the cool things about all this front matter when it comes to Astro components is you can run JavaScript directly in there. So let me open back up an index astro page in our blog directory and we're pulling in all the posts right up here now what if we could grab these posts and before we loop through them we could format them according to whatever we need on the page well we can do that and we're going to do that in our utils.js so i'm going to come down here we're going to write a custom function we're just going to call this format blog posts and it's going to take in a couple of things if i come over here we want it to first of all take in our posts and then we also want to take in an optional options argument. Now it's important that it's optional, so let's go ahead and do equals and then an empty object. So it doesn't have to pass in anything, but if we do, it'll override that empty object, obviously. So we're going to have four different things you can do on here. We'll say filter out drafts to start with. We'll set this to true. Then I'm just going to copy this down and we'll say filter out future posts in case you want to do that. Next, I'm going to have sort by date. We'll set this to true as well. And then finally, we can have a limit. So limit by however, whatever number you want. And to start with, we'll just set this to undefined. Then what I want to do is actually reduce all the posts based on these criteria right here. To start with, however, let's go ahead and just console.log the posts just so we see exactly what we're getting. And I'll go ahead and save this here. Let me then jump over this way and we need to import this. So I'll come up here and say like utils uh, imports or something like that. And we will import format blog posts from and i need to go up i need to go up again finally into js and finally into utils then i'm going to come over here and we're just going to say const formatted posts equals format blog posts and i'm going to pass it all my posts so if i save it here and then i open up my local a dev server i'll scroll down to the bottom you'll notice that i'm just getting a console log of all the posts that are being passed to it all right so just so we know it's actually getting there now we've got it down this way now let me go ahead and jump back over this way because obviously we don't want to just console log. I actually want to get back from this a single value and that would be whatever my formatted posts are, whatever I want them to be in whatever component I've called this. So I'm going to say const and then we'll call this filtered posts and I want this to be a post.reduce. Now if you're not familiar with the reduce method, I've done a pretty long video explaining how it works or maybe not long, but hopefully in depth. I think it's like 15 minutes or so. And then I've also done a JavaScript challenge video on my, on my channel where we actually work with the reduce method a lot. The long and short of it is that with reduce, unlike things like map, I don't have to get back an array. I can actually shape the data however I want, loop through it, and as I'm looping through it in a single time, filter out what I don't want all in one go. And at the end, I get one thing back. So what I get is this accumulator and the thing I'm looping through. So in this case, I guess this needs to be posts. And then for each post, so this would be like in a map, you get each of those. But the very first thing you get, the first parameter here, is the accumulator or the thing that you're going to pass to the next iteration. There's one more thing to give it, and that would be an array. Because in this case, I actually do want an array back. Now, the very first thing I want to do is look at what I need from this. The only things I'm really concerned about are the date and then the draft status, because these both use the date. This would not be related to the front matter or anything else I pass in. It's just a number I can pass in if I want to limit how many I get back. So I just need those two things. So let's go ahead and grab those. So I'll, I'll destructure these. We'll grab the date and I'll grab the draft status. We'll grab these from the post.front matter. Next, let's just kind of work through our list. So we want to filter out uh, drafts if true. So I need to check two different things. I need to check if filter out drafts is true. So if that is true, and then inside of this, I need to say if the draft itself is set to true. So if it is a draft, if both of those things are true, I don't need to check anything else. This should not belong in my final array. So I can just return the ACC. Now the very first loop through the ACC will be set to whatever I put down here. In this case, it's going to be set to the empty array. So it's going to just pass on an empty array on the very first loop through because in this case, I know for a fact that this is set to draft. So it should already get rid of this and it won't return it at the end. Now I've got some other conditions to check for. So I can say filter out 
future posts if true. And here I'll just say if filter out future posts if that is true. And a new date from the date I passed in. So this would be from the actual post itself. It's that if that is greater than today, then in that case, also I want to return the ACC. So in this case, if it got past this, but the post is in the future, so if I set this to false so that the, the draft was not true, but the post is still in the future, it should now kick out of it at this point. Now at this point, those are the only things that are actually going to kick things out of the final array. So I want to actually add the post to the accumulator. So we'll say add post to ACC. In other words, at this point, if you got through both of those checks, I want you to be part of the ACC. So I'll take that empty array at this point on the first loop, and then I'll push into it my post. And then finally, I'm going to return the ACC. If I come over here, I should actually have down here a filtered posts. This filtered post should have kicked out any drafts and it should have kicked out any future posts. Now there's two more conditions that I need to worry about. This sort by date, that's set to true by default, and the limit as well. So here I'm going to say if sort by date, if that is true, then I want to take my filtered posts here. I want to dot sort them. And I'm going to take the first and the second and then just keep looping through them as we get going here. And I want to compare their dates. Now there's a couple different ways to do this, but I'm just going to say new date. And I'll say b.frontmatter.date minus new date a.frontmatter.date. What that should do is loop through each of these and compare them. If it's positive, it will put one in front of the other. If it's negative, it'll reverse that. And in the end, I'll get a sorted back item based on the dates that were passed in. And then the way I'm going to set this up is I'm going to have an else condition. In other words, if sort by date is not true, I just want to randomize it, all right? Because sometimes I might want to do that. In fact, we'll do that in a later component we build. So I'll grab my filtered posts again, and this time I will sort. And the function I'll pass it here is just math.random. This isn't like truly random, but it's not a huge deal for what I'm using it for. And we'll do by like 0 0.5. So half the time it'll be positive, half the time it'll be negative. So it'll just alter their order. So we could say something up here, since we didn't leave a comment, sort by date or randomize. Either way, something will happen. Now finally here, I need to limit if number is passed in. So because we have undefined up top, maybe the easiest thing to do is just do a type of check. So we could say type of limit if that equals a number. And then here I just want to return filtered post dot slice, and we'll go from zero, so the very first item in the array, to whatever limit that we passed in. If it's not a number, then I just want to return the entire thing, so we'll return filtered posts. Now it's quite possible we did something wrong in all of that, but hopefully that makes sense. And I'll come back over this way, and now I want to grab all these formatted posts. Let's, instead of mapping through all our posts, let's map through just the formatted posts, and if I do that, it removes that first one. You can see also it formats them according to the date that they were written. So all the way through through the top number right up here, 12, 6, and it gives me just the first four. Now, why is it giving me only the first four? Well, if I come over here to my post.1, it's because a lot of these posts are actually in the future from when I'm writing this. So let's change this back uh, like this. If I save that and I come over this way, I should now have five. One, two, three, four, five. And I think this is the one right here. Now let me check my post six, because I think that one could be in the future from where I stand. No, nope, let's check post, maybe it was post four. Yeah, so this is in the future from where I'm sitting right now. So let's change this to something like 12, four, and then all of them should show one, two, uh, three, four, five, six. Okay, so all of those show. Now let's go ahead and change one of these back. Maybe let's come over here. Let's put this in the future from where I am. So 12, nine, that should disappear for us. And now what I want to do is actually change around the optional options argument. So right inside here, first of all, I might want to say filter out drafts. I might want to set this to false. So I don't think we have any set to false. So let's come back over here. Let's set this to true that this is a draft. If I come over here now, this does not filter it out, right? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I still only have five because that one was already not there. So that doesn't help. Let's change this to like 12, two. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so all of them are now showing because I said I wanted drafts to be present. Now, the other thing I might want to pass in here is I might want to say filter out future posts and I might want to set this to false. So if I set this to false, I come back here and change this to a future date. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're all back, even though this is in the future. That's because I've added this as a customization. Now, the other thing I can do is say sort by date and set this to false so that it randomizes them. And you'll see that I just get them in any kind of random order. And then finally, I can limit them. 
So I can limit by like two or something like that. So I only get two back, one, two, and because it's random, it'll just be random ones each time I refresh, I think. Yeah, so each time I refresh, it'll just be two different random ones. All right, so all of this that we did, which is just JavaScript, gives us the chance to basically customize what we're getting. We're gonna use that throughout the rest of the project, but this video explains how to write all of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and close down that utils.js. We're gonna get rid of all of those for now and just go back to all posts listed out. And I'm gonna go ahead and change this post six back to something like 12.3 so that it shows for me. So I've got all six posts now showing. Let me just double check. I guess this, this also needs to be changed back to false. All right, so as you were, they should all be fairly similar. I think I just changed the date on one of those. Now, here's the cool thing. Because we've created all of this here, it's really easy to now reuse all of this anywhere we want, including like on the home page. So that's what we're gonna do next. So let's go ahead and customize the home page, and then we'll call this video done. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this entire section right here. So we'll just copy this out, and then I will go ahead and open up the index.astro page at the main root. So this is at the root level of my pages directory, and I'm just going to paste this directly in here. Now we obviously need a few things, so let's go ahead and grab those. Let's grab this, and let's see, do we need to pass this? Yep, and then I also need this, like that. Okay, so let's come back over here. We're going to have to change exactly where these are pulling from, but that should mostly work. So this is a component. It doesn't need to go up quite that high, and same thing here as well. Now here for this glob import, I need to change this slightly because I need to go inside now my blog directory and then grab all my markdown files. Now if you want to, you could do something like this to grab anything in subdirectories, but I don't have my project set up like this, so this works for me. Now in this case, as I come down this way, I actually want to change this up because this shouldn't really be my H1 for this page, so I'm going to change this to an H2, but I want to keep the size about the same, which is why I separate those two so that the class can style it and the semantic tag can be the right tag for that section. The other thing is since this is an H2, this now needs to be an H3 because it's now the sub items in this larger section. So let me save that and I'll jump over to the home page and we should see something very similar, which is it pulls in all the same stuff. So it looks very similar. Now, one thing I want to do is on my home page, I really only want three to come in. So I could slice it directly in here, but because I'm already manipulating the data and we already set up that limit, I can just say limit is three. And now on the home page, I should only ever get three. By default, it's going to give me the most recent three. And by default, it's going to filter out all my drafts and it's going to filter out future posts. And just to make sure that you're getting the exact same thing, let me go back to that post four and just make sure I change this back to like 12.9 so that I'm only getting uh, five right now because of where I'm at in history. You might need to change one of these to be in the future so that as we write other things, you just know that everything is working properly. But for now, that's what I'm going to do so I can show you stuff later with that. Now, the other thing I want to do is grab my about page and I want to use a lot of this stuff over there as well. So I'm actually gonna grab all this section as well. Obviously I would probably style the homepage a little bit differently if I was doing this from scratch, but for now I just wanna go ahead and get something up and working and this is what we're gonna use on this project. So you can see here when I paste this in, I need to go ahead and grab my link and make sure that that is imported as well. So I'll just copy this down, grab both of those and change this to link. And that way it shows up down below. And let's see, I think all the rest of this is fine. Maybe let's shorten this as if it were like a short paragraph. And then let's change this to something like uh, learn or like say hi or something like that. So I'm going to wave and then say like say hello. In this case, I am going to leave this to, at an H1 because it'll kind of be the main thing on the page. And there you go right here. Say hello, my blog, all that is set up and ready to go. Maybe I actually want to change this. Let's change this to secondary. And maybe we turn on the outline. Let's try this. So we'll say is filled. We'll set this to false. And we'll set the border visible here to true. How do we like that? Yeah. Not great. All right, let's get rid of that. Let's just go back to the secondary like that, okay? Maybe we say like about me or something like that. And let's point this to our about page. So if I were to click on this, it takes me to the about page, which happens to be basically the same thing, but you know, it's just a sample blog. Okay, so I've got three blog posts on the front home page. I've got my about page done. I've got my blog page basically done. What more could we have? Well, it turns out there's a lot more we can do. This is the basics for sure. And I hope it's helped you. In the next video, we're going to talk more about dynamic routes and how we can set up some custom stuff for these reference pages right here, these categories, and then also the author pages. There's some really cool things you can do in Astro, and that's what we're going to look at next.